In this video, I will provide you with an example of how you can build a gable roof on this side of a home addition instead of a hip roof. And I won't be going through the entire process because I've pretty much explained everything in this video and I will put a link to that video in the comment area and in that video I have a lot more information and step-by-step -step instructions on how to build this type of roof here and keep in mind that this is a home addition if we go to the other side of the building this is what your building might look like without the home addition and of course this is what it would look like with the home addition and the hip roof so the first thing I want to do is remove some of the ceiling joists. We are not going to be using this setup here. And instead, we will simply run our ceiling joist through all the way to the end. And we will need to have a longer board for our ridge instead of stopping it around here somewhere for the hip rafters. And again, I think you're going to get enough information out of the two videos to figure out what it might look like or could look like, even though I'm not going to be providing you with step-by-step -step instructions because I have so many other videos about building roofs and home additions at our website. So definitely go there and check out some of those videos, especially if you're looking for more information on how to figure out the lengths of the roof rafters and where to position them along with the ceiling joist and a view of the rafter blocks from the bottom here and then of course a view of them from above and the ceiling joist and the rafters will usually connect to the wall framing plates with 16 D nails and some of them will need to be angled while others will be driven through the ceiling joist into the side of the roof rafter straight on through in the same way that you would be attaching the fascia board to the roof rafters and in this video we are going to be installing straps over the sheathing instead of collar ties as a replacement for the collar ties and of course you will need to install some gable studs and whether or not they line up exactly with the studs below I will leave that up to you and don't forget in some cases you are going to need a gable vent or roof dormer vents to allow for attic air circulation and I'm starting to wonder if we're ever going to get rid of that it seems like there are a lot of problems created in colder climates from the moisture in the air that might freeze in your attic and then thaw out in the springtime creating some type of water damage along with some of the newer spray foam insulation techniques that people are using and of course we will need some backing here ceiling backing for the drywall and we can use a 2x4 for that instead of a larger piece of lumber like a 2x6 that we are using for our ceiling joist and if you are going to use this design make sure that the ridge extends past the side of the rafters or the end of the wall framing so that you can attach the fascia board to it. And that would look something like this without the lookouts installed. And I'm gonna provide you with two different assembly methods for the lookouts. And the first one on the list will be to move the rafters back along with the ceiling joist so that we can get a little longer board in here that might help with our cantilever. And I'm not 100% sure that you can't leave the rafters in their original location and have everything work out properly or that you'll ever have a problem with the fascia board sagging. And another thing I did was moved the ceiling joist to the other side. I'm still within my six 16 inch on center measurements here between the ceiling joist and the ceiling backing and the reason why I did this was to get a little better nailing for the lookout here however I'm pretty sure you'd be able to nail this into the ceiling joist if it was on the other side without much of a problem and another thing you could do would be to end nail through the block here into the lookout if you were looking for a little more structural support so here we have 32 inch on center lookouts and that's usually going to be the maximum spacing for this type of design however you might consider adding more of them 
These are spaced 12 inches on center and we're using the original location of the rafter. However, I do not know if this is going to work in your area. And of course, you would need to check with your local building authorities to validate all of the information in this video anyway. And let's not forget that I will not be able to provide you with lumber sizes or structural engineering for your projects also. And to wrap this video up, we can go ahead and install our roof sheathing. And as I often point out in my videos, you might need to have a piece larger than 24 inches for your roof sheathing, suggesting that this board would need to stop over here and then a piece would need to extend all the way over to the fascia board from here, if that was actually going to be at least 24 inches long and this would have been something specified by your structural engineer on the home building plans. And after we have installed our roof sheathing, we can install our straps. And these straps will be replacing the collar ties. And the spacing on these straps is 32 inches on center. And most of the time, the spacing is going to be 48 inches on center. That is a maximum spacing. You could always make the spacing smaller you just can't make it larger. And sometimes by simply adding one more strap, you can reduce the length of the spacing to create something a little stronger. So there it is, the gable roof home edition instead of a hip roof home edition for this particular design.